Interestingly, we were talking about, um, you know, Enfield and Aprilia there. I've been looking a little bit about the UK sales figures because they obviously take a few weeks for each um, month of data to come in. Um, mm. But the fact that we've now got December's sales data for last year means that you can get a full picture of 2022. And so you can see the best selling bikes um, in the UK of the year. I don't know if you've clicked on the link that I put in the podcast notes yet, but I wondered if you could take a stab at what you think is amongst the top 10 if you haven't already looked i haven't already looked so what's the Great. top 10 bike <laughs> top 10 bikes sold this uh this month yeah and there's three main categories <laughs> within here one is a genre of bike which is no surprise mm -hmm. that it's amongst the top sellers number two is a, a manufacturer that's quite frequent there and then number three is a model that is quite frequent there as well okay that's tough uh, to get your head around uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I'm going to end up looking like a plank here, but I'm going to say, is it scooters? Are they the top yeah, selling? Yeah, that's the genre. Bikes? Well done, mate. Sure, yeah, I think genre. I mean, I'll take that at least. If the other two are wrong, then I'm happy with one win. So yeah, like the 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 best seller in the country is Honda's PCX one two five, and it sells four thousand scooters a year. Second best is Honda CBF one two five. So uh, that's actually um, a, a proper bike, not a scooter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the Honda Vision one ten. That's number three. I mean, this just goes to show how much Honda dominates. Uh, number four, NMAX 125 Yamaha scooter. Yeah. And I think there's another scoot in there somewhere. And this, uh, yeah, the Honda SH125, which is like a big wheel scooter. And I think this is yeah. the sort of delivery market, you know, mm. and commuting on these little scooters that's driving a lot of those sales. Yeah. Um, so people taking up you know, Deliveroo and Uber Eats and stuff like that, probably buying yeah. up some of those. Uh, so well done. Actually, you got one out of three there. There was a manufacturer that's common and a model. Manufacturer that's common, and we're not uh, in the rest. We, we, we'll take out the scooters. Now we're into the actual motorbikes. Uh, actual motorbikes. I'm going to say Yamaha. No I guess. Oh, Royal uh, Enfield. Yes, mate. Yes. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> so, uh, in tenth place, the Interceptor 650 still going strong. They sold nearly oh. 1,100 bikes last year. Yeah. Uh, the classic 350, you know, sort of the, the new 350 that you've got the Hunter, yes. you've got the uh, Meteor, and you've got the classic, mm -hmm. which is the most chromed up one. Uh, mm -hmm. That was in ninth place, the classic, at 1145. Mm -hmm. And then the Meteor 350 is in sixth with 1500 sold. So uh, quite impressive numbers. And I will yeah. say that I would expect another excellent, you know, year for. Um, Royal Enfield in 2023 because of the launch of the uh, Super Meteor 650, which we just talked about yeah. uh, in the last episode. Now, mm. the 650s have always been really popular, this um, Interceptor and the Continental GT Cafe Racer yeah. style bike. The Interceptor, though, mm. it has broader appeal because you have an easier going riding position. So that's been the one that sells really well. But it feels yeah. like, given there's not that much competition for affordable cruiser uh, classic style bikes, that the Super Meteor presumably it's going to sell a lot this year. And then the 350s have both sold really well. Um, but we've got the Hunter now, which came out at the end of last year. So it's got yeah. a whole year now to rack up sales. And I presume that, again, because it's at that neutral um, retro style that's just like an all-rounder, it's going to have broad appeal. I, yeah, i got to say, haven't ridden it. It's a good, I like that. That's a really, I don't think it will ever sit in my garage, but it. I can... It's such a sensible, like clever exercise in design, that one, because I can see the audience for it yeah. immediately. And Great little city bike. Yeah, it's perfect for it. And to the point where, you know, if I did have multiple bikes and I just wanted something to zip around, that's the sort of thing I genuinely would consider because you don't really care about the performance of a bike when all you're doing is commuting on it. It's got to be economical, yeah, uh, cheap to buy, yeah. not that nickable. And yeah, uh, but also still look cool, and it and ticks cool, all those exactly, boxes. yeah, and it ticks all of those things, and you can you can tweak it and customize it, and you know, make a little uh, easy to ride sort of Sunday rider. Definitely, and the, and the reason it's not that nickable, in my opinion, I mean, any motorcycle in London, let's say, it, uh, there's potential for it to be nicked if yeah, you don't have any security, but I just don't think that a teenage you know bike thief is really going to go after <laughs> like a twenty horsepower. <laughs> like no. 4,000 pound 
Um, no. retro. Not unless just... they mistake it for a triumph or something. I no, it's not happening. But it? even then, I, I reckon <laughs> my um, my street twin, for example, it, it's not a prime target that sort of bike no. unless you unless you make it too good an offer. I think they're more I so guess, looking yeah. for the sports bikes yeah. and nakeds yeah. and KTM's and things like that. They're a bit of sexy. So we got. Um, Genre scooters, manufacturer that's yeah. most common after Honda scooters is yeah. Enfield. And then yeah. you've got uh, the model that is like the best seller in the UK. Not not the best seller, but the best selling big bike in the UK. Best selling big bike in the UK. And we're not talking Honda or Royal Enfield, or are they still back in play? No, nah, they're out of the equation oh, now. They're out of the loop. It's uh, so obvious. Oh, what, <laughs> what do I see? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, what I do thought I this was the one of? you'd get. You've done really oh, well really? so far. Yeah. All right. Uh, MC07. No. Huh? I don't know. I'm not even going to try and guess. Ah, tough one, mate. Do you want a clue? I mean... Give me a clue. Give me a clue. Well... Oh, it's so hard to give you a clue and not completely give it away. Not give it away. Yeah. Let me try and think abstractly here about how I can give you a clue. <laughs> Surely just the brand is enough for me to... Well, yeah. I feel like that's definitely going to get it. You. I definitely... Yeah, okay. Uh... The brand starts with B and ends in W. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Is it a GS? Yeah, mate. Is it well really? Done. Yeah. Mate, that's... That's a pricey, fair enough. I mean, yeah, fair news. So this is, you've hit the nail on the head there. That's what I was going to flag up about that. I mean, this is yeah. the same story every year. The best selling two bikes, the, the best selling large capacity bike on the market in the UK. And the same for like Germany and stuff like that is the GS Adventure, you know, the big tank, sure. spoke wheels, slightly taller. And then second to that is the regular GS. In fact, the only mm. other bike in the list that's bigger than a couple of hundred cc's is the... Um, the Meteor 350 sits between them, but there's no bikes above 500 cc that sell more. Mm -hmm. But like you say, you know, you're looking at probably starting. I mean, I think you can get a, a GS for less than 15 grand brand new, but mm -hmm. it is yeah. very basic in spec. And as soon as you start adding stuff, it goes mm -hmm. up and up to like probably for a GS adventure fully tricked out with all the bits and bobs. Yeah. Maybe 25 or something or nudging 30. I'd love to see what you can, you know, rack up in there. Yeah. And so that's the <laughs> that's thing that is mind blowing. I mean, let's say conservatively you yeah. averaged 15 grand for, um, for those GSs and then sure. you averaged 20 grand for the GS adventure. Maybe yeah. that, I don't know if that's pushing it a bit. Maybe I'd say 18, but yeah, go on. 18. Given what everyone fits them out with. And then you add those two together. Um, this is the hardest question. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't even know the numbers. Go on. You're going to ask me how much that makes for BMW, yeah? Uh, yeah, to the closest million. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. And this is just the UK? Just the UK, closest million. Oh, it's got to be high then, hasn't it? So I'm going to say 50, 50 million. Are you serious, mate? 53 that, and a half. Have I lowballed it? Or have, no, oh, 53 really? and a half. <laughs> hey! Did you actually have a calculator there? <laughs> no, not at all. No, <laughs> that was just the most generic number I could... I mean, 50 is a pretty obvious number. Wow, I thought I was going to be... I didn't know where I was going to be with that, to be honest. I could have been highballing it, lowballing it. That's... Uh, that's remarkably yeah. accurate. I mean, obviously I said to the nearest million, that's going to give you a little bit. And I didn't say to the nearest 10 or 100 millions, but that's true. I don't want to detract too much from your achievement there, mate. That was <laughs> yeah, very yeah, it's impressive. Not, not taking away my trophy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, it does surprise me though. I mean, why would you think, what would you cite that as uh, for people choosing the GS? Do you reckon it's the long way round, long way down sort of audience? Has it still got that kind of reputation or... They just see their friends with them, or is it like a trade-up thing where they've got one, and then every two years BMW get them back in for a new model? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think everybody that I've met that rides one loves it and says it's the ultimate do it all. You know, um, all rounder can go fast, can talk, can go off road. You know, yeah. it is everything that an adventure bike should be. Potentially that as well, but I think also you know we're talking about how Yamaha have jacked up the price of the Tenere because the reputation is great, probably just certain bikes have a certain, you know, aura around them and, and it, and it lasts for a long time and, and it is good anyway. I mean, it's a good bike, but like you say, it's a lot of money, but I wonder, you know, I was thinking about the Tenere, you know, all the Paul Tara's, um, sort of trials videos. And I think that mm. has really helped the Tenere get this image of like an amazing off-roader. Plus people say in the reviews, mm. it's great off-road, but yeah. it's helped by those kind of extreme off-road 
stunt type videos mm -hmm. and yeah maybe you're right with the gs it is from what i gather it did start with the long way round stuff yes um but like maybe that ignites the reputation and then it builds over the years and then yeah mm. i don't know but i think you have to just also say like it is excellent and i hear as well yeah. that the customer service kind of experience at bmw dealers is really good because they've got that sort of mm. um a sort of side business of the car dealers or quite yes. often that's the yeah, case yeah, that's so you've right. got that kind of like intense level of uh, premium automotive customer service yep. whereas if you go to like a bike only brand maybe they just don't have that high standard of knowing how to treat people when they walk through yeah, the door yeah i mean some some of them definitely and yeah I, I know what you mean yeah there is a it is a kind of step above i suppose because there's there is more money I'm, i mean unless i'm completely wrong more money in uh the automotive trade than say bikes you'd imagine so, so if you can pin it to a, a car dealership and bike dealership then yeah you've got it ups the quality, I suppose, of your product just by being next to it. And also, if the bikes are that expensive, then, you know, you're going to look after the You'd people that so. are coming in. Yeah, you would hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah, no, nice. I mean, I get it. It is a fun... It's nice that at least it is a good bike. It's not just it's got a reputation and it's actually, like, crap, and we all know it's crap. It's um, mm. it's a fantastic bike, and that's all I ever hear about it anyway. It's well-deserved. <laughs> no qualms. <laughs> yeah, take it. <laughs> that's interesting that you're now the... Um, the gatekeeper, I would say, for this list, it's not just pure numbers. You need the yeah. the Tim my rubber stamp in yeah. order to appear. The only thing I think the GS does need in the next like year or two is the sort of radar tech. You know, it doesn't have like a front facing radar for adaptive mm. cruise control, and it doesn't have the blind spot warnings. Whereas like the Multistrada V4, you've got rear facing yeah. radar for. Well, it's got both actually. The KTM mm. has got KTM, um, yeah. front facing radar for adaptive cruise. The Triumph 1200 doesn't have the uh, adaptive cruise but it does have the rear facing blind spot warnings yeah uh, it feels like that's a gap in its capabilities although there yeah. are other bmws like the rt and the um r18 big bikes that that you know they have that technology they just don't put it in the in the gs yet so hopefully that's uh, uh coming soon 